Hey everyone, welcome to Tranquil Dreams and another episode of What's Up. Um, so I am trying to get these episodes out a little bit earlier than usual now, but um, I am having a little problem this week with a bit of a crazy hectic time. Um, so regardless, we're going to jump right in. Um, if you're new here, uh, just to give you a good idea of what's going on, um, What's Up is a segment where we talk, where I talk about um, just catching up on things that I've been um, binging, uh, TV binging, reading, uh, watching, and playing as in games. So we're going to get right into it. Um, in terms of TV series, uh, I finally finished Ugly Delicious, which is a um, Netflix uh, food documentary series uh, hosted by David Chang. And it is a very, very interesting series, to say the least. Um, I took my time with it because it is very deep in talking about just, um, I think it's just the cultural, uh, the cultural issues in societies and accepting other, uh, traditions and stuff like that. Um, I guess mostly focused in the United States, but he does take a lot of time to kind of go visit other places and stuff like that. Um, I'm gonna, I, I'm still thinking about it a little bit. I just finished it um, a few days ago. Uh, second that I'm to finish is a Taiwanese series called Miss Rose. I talked about it last time. Um, it's a Taiwanese series from 2012. I really like the main guy who plays it. Um, I heard, I watched him before in, um, Easy Fortune, Happy Life. And, uh, he was in a supporting role then. And this one, he's in a little bit more of a, a later role. And, uh, I definitely had a really great time with it. It was really fun. It was really funny. Um, I can't say it's one of my favorite series, um, in terms of Taiwanese series, but, um, for the main characters, I really, really loved it a lot. Uh, not so much, I don't know about the story so much as that. Um, other, so after that is the most recent thing that I finished is a Singaporean series, actually my first Singaporean series, and it's called The Dream Job, and it was from 2016. Um, what drew me into that is that Hugo Ng, which is a very popular um, Hong Kong TV series movie actor, was part of it. Uh, you can actually see also see him in a series um, that is currently also on Netflix called OCTV, which is very great. It's full of veterans. It's a really great series. Um, I did What's Up after I watched it. Um, I will be re-watching again because I haven't done the TV binge and it's kind of getting, and I really felt like I needed a reason to re-watch it just to kind of fill it up um, to be more accurate in what I'm going to write. Uh, but the dream job, um, other than Hugo Ng returning to his homeland to, um, uh, to film this, um, it was really nice. I guess it's nice because I'm so used to all the actors from Taiwan or Hong Kong and in Singapore, there's a lot of people that all the actor, all the cast mostly, I don't know. So, um, it is in Mandarin, um, but it is very fun to watch. Um, I think the story itself is a bit generic, um, uh, but and it falls into some of the tropes that I don't like in some of the series that I normally watch. But the dream job is still very, I think it kind of crept up on me how much these characters grew on me because by the end, um, it got very, very dramatic and uh, it really hit me hard in some parts. So other than that, um, that's it for a TV series. Uh, I do plan on starting a few new things that have come out. Um, I'm taking a little break from TV series because I took a break from movies before and um, you're going to see that in terms of movies I actually, well, I watched a lot, but um, it was for other purposes. So anyways, moving on to reading. Um, I am working, last time I talked about having started King for a Day and really liking it. It's in the King Trilogy series. And I really love the first book. Um, the second book, I have to say, is starting to fall into those tropes that I don't really like. Um, but it still has a bit of depth to it. There is still a lot of mystery behind the characters of King and um, this, uh, the main character, Gomia. And um, it sells itself very erotically, but it is definitely heading into that direction, especially since I have finished that book now and I am starting the third book, the final book in the series um, called King of Me. And um, I'm currently still reading it. I'm not even halfway done, so I don't really want to make any judgment until the next time. But um, other than that, I mean, I finally finished Phoenix Cycle, The Best Shall Rise, which is um, something that I did for a blog tour. Um, the review did go up on the site. Unfortunately, um, I was um, very underwhelmed by the book. Um, 
whether it being a YA or a dystopian, um, I found the writing really messy and there were many issues with it. Um, I'm going to link the review in the description below and you can check it out, see what you think. Maybe this is more up your alley than mine. Um, I've been very, very picky with dystopian YA novels lately, mostly because it's just been so popular that um, a lot of people are, you know, banking on the easy stuff. And I know that writing is hard. I mean, I have a few books myself that I've written for NaNoWriMo and I've never actually um, edited them or done anything with them. And I understand that it's a really hard process. And, uh, but, you know, just like some jobs are not meant for everybody, maybe writing isn't meant for everybody. Um, there was a really good idea in the Phoenix Cycle. Um, but the execution and the editing definitely could have done some work there to kind of polish it and make it a little bit better. Um, it always sucks when you have poten have a potentially good idea and the execution doesn't work quite so well. But maybe I'm in the minority. Maybe if you go on Book Goodreads, somebody else has another review where they loved it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm only one person, right? Um, and uh, after that, for movies... Um, the main theme of this one was uh, catching up on Resident Evil series. Last time I watched the first one, uh, we had to prep for the Resident Evil um, podcast that we did over on Movies and Tea. So I ended up binge-watching binge the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth one, finishing up the entire franchise in one weekend. Um, suffice to say, it was kind of crazy, but I am a big fan of the movies, so... I had a really great time kind of revisiting this world and um, seeing this great uh, female character uh, in Alice that I personally love. I love Alice is one of my uh, favorite female action stars, um, action characters actually. So uh, it was really nice to just kind of fall back into that world for a little moment and I'll probably won't watch it again for another year or two after that. But um, the podcast is up and I'll link that in the description below. Um, other than that, I have, um, I don't know who pe where people get these things, but I, I read that A Little Chaos and Vrower City Blues will be leaving Netflix Canada soon, so I wanted to catch up with those two movies, um, reason why they're on the list. I also watched a little indie film which was released, um, last week or so called They Remain. It's kind of a horror thriller-esque sort of film. Um, in terms of standout films... I don't really think anything stood out too much in this one. Um, I do think Far City Blues has its merit. Uh, it's a little bit generic as a coming of age sports film, um, but it does have some very strong characterizations, some very strong topics. And, um, you know, if you want to watch a super hardcore coach, John Voigt does a really great stuff, does some really great job in this. Um, also, you can see the late Paul Walker, uh, whom I love a lot. Um, in one of his earlier roles uh, as a supporting actor. Um, aside from that, I mean, a little chaos. I can't really not like that. Um, I love the music in it. I love the setting of it. Um, the late Alan Rickman is in this. He directed and acted in it, which is um, pretty nice. But I think there were some execution issues, obviously. But it does star um, the very elegant Kate Winslet, which I love, and the very charming Matthias Schonertz. I don't know how to say his name. Um, who I also admire quite a bit. So there were a lot of elements that made this movie stand out for me personally. Um, I think that's it for that. Um, they Remain is one that you could check out. I, I don't think it's for everybody. It is quite slow, very indie. Um, it has its problems. Um, I actually, the review is, I share that on both That Moment In and my own site. So um, I'll also link that in the description below. Um, jumping into games. Oh, we're moving fast today. <laughs> jumping into games. We're actually, um, I've been working on some of the newer keys that we got. Um, and uh, which the one that I've been working on, uh, we just recorded, is the review for Omen Sight, which will be going up in that moment in very, very soon. Um, and on Game Warp, uh, our, our channel, obviously. Um Omen Sight is a game by Spearhead Montreal, Spearhead Games Montreal. Omen Sight is a spiritual successor, also it's also known as a spiritual successor as Stories, The Paths of Destiny. Um, I haven't played that one, I've always thought it was a very interesting idea in that one where you can run around and I've seen some footage of it and I, 
I do want to play it. We do, I do own the game. I just haven't had time to do it yet. Omen Sight was also one of my anticipated um, 2018 titles, which makes it very, very interesting to play. It does have a bit of a reconstructing. It's a little bit of a murder mystery, a bit of an RPG, um, very heavily narrative, and it is very repetitive, but it does have a lot of flexibility and stuff in it, which works for itself very well. Um, I am still working on um, some of the little things in the games uh, and that sort of thing. Um, after that, I mean, I am currently playing Shape of the World. Uh, Shape of the World is also an indie title um, by Hollow Tree Games, located in Vancouver. So this game is very similar to kind of the experience you would get from Flower or um, Journey, where you walk around these ecosystems and these surreal environments, surreal psychedelic environments, and the colors change and you walk through these portals and they move into different things. And as you move, trees grow and grasses come out, ferns come out, and then sometimes you have underwater life which swims around, uh, other wildlife that's just around you that moves around. And as you walk around, you get to interact with other things. And as you interact, your the environment changes. And as you go out there, you know, as you move further and further, there are different ecosystems to discover, and um, I'm currently about three in. Um, I can I will link uh, the first gameplay video down um, down in the description below. We should be releasing some more very soon as I get more time to play with it. Um, hopefully, I'll be finishing the game soon before E3 hits this weekend because next week is going to be fully dedicated. Starting this Saturday, well, it's going to be fully dedicated all to E3. So I don't know what's going to happen with the next What's Up. We, it might be just a lot of demos that I've been playing and stuff because of E3. Uh, usually those things happen. Um, other than that, uh, I've been playing Rusty Lake Roots. Roots is quite a bigger game than Q any of the Cube Escapes or even Rusty Lake Hotel. It is these little, little mini stories as you watch this family, the Vanderboons, grow um, grow up and expand in their family and you grow up this tra family tree and you go through different puzzles in different areas and they're kind of like short little puzzles that build up the the story and expand um, so far really really I'm having a lot of fun with it it is quite long so um, I've done about two different sittings in there um, I hope that the next time I go I'm gonna get into the game I'm probably gonna finish it um, aside from that I'm still playing with Super Lucky's Tale that's kind of like a side thing it's it is quite long, so I'm still working on it. It's kind of like my relaxing game, just like Shape of the World. Um, I mean, that's about it for this What's Up. Um, so tell me, what is up with you? Uh, what are you binging, reading, watching, playing, um, and or? <laughs> you can share all those things. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, remember to subscribe and like the video, give the video a thumbs up. It always helps me to know that someone is watching this, someone's enjoying it. Um, interact with me a little, tell me what you're doing, maybe give me some recommendations. I'll absolutely appreciate it. Um, but for now, I'll catch you guys soon in another episode of What's Up or on another blog post. Thank you for watching, as always, and bye.